Have you ever used a component library and tried to customize something? If yes, you probably know how annoyingly difficult it can be sometimes, especially if you have a design that you need to stick to. For the longest time, designers had basically two options for building UIs. Either use a component library that offers ready out-of-the-box components or create custom components from scratch. Before we get into the third option, which is unstyled components, let's first take a look at the downsides of the first two options in order to understand where the need for unstyled components came from. The first and really popular option is the use of component libraries. They offer ready out-of-the-box components that you can easily copy-paste into your project. No matter which library you choose, these components are styled, contain business logic to properly function, and are usually accessible for users who use a keyboard or people with disabilities who use screen readers, for example. On paper, this sounds great, because you can quickly bootstrap your website or application and focus on what actually matters, like the content of the page. And if you need to customize them a bit, in most cases, that's no problem. But what if you have a highly custom and complex design system and you need to stick to it 100%? That can be a problem. It depends on the library, but every one of them has some constraints on how far you can dig and change how the components look and feel. And usually the deeper you go, the more difficult it gets. At that point you might get the idea, why not just build my own components from scratch? Many of us can fall into this trap. At first this seems like a great idea, but unless you have a lot of time and a lot of resources, this will likely end up in a countless issues. One of the biggest is bad accessibility. This includes incorrect use of HTML markup, missing properties such as area labels, and many more things that if not done correctly or not at all, will impact the accessibility of your website and SEO. Also, there are tons of edge cases in browsers that you would need to take care of. To be honest, this topic alone could be a whole video on its own. And then there are other problems, such as onboarding new devs for example. They might find it difficult to understand all the custom components and will need more time to get started compared to a popular UI library that most devs are likely already familiar with. And even if they're not, most component libraries offer good documentation, so picking them up is fairly easy. I think you're starting to see the dilemma here. If you don't have a lot of time and resources, but want to implement a highly custom design, there seems to be no good option here. This is exactly the problem that unstyled component libraries try to solve. So what are these libraries anyway? They basically offer components that contain all the business logic to function, conform to accessibility best practices and guidelines, work properly in all browsers, cover all edge cases, and are highly tested. Pedro Duarte, a creator of Radix UI, which is one of the most popular unstyled component libraries for React, stated in a presentation that it took them over 2000 hours, 6 months, 50 reviews and over 1000 commits just to create a drop-down menu that fulfills all the requirements mentioned earlier. By now, the most basic features have been covered because uh, I've been using my mouse up until now. So we know that I can hover over these menus and I can open sub-menus, all of that with my pointer. But what if I rely on keyboard navigation? Well, you'd be glad to know that the Radix drop-down menu supports full keyboard navigation. First thing we can try is, you see how right now the focus is on the button. I can press either enter or space to open it. So here I press enter and as I do that, you can see how the first item is already focused. I can use my up and down arrows to navigate across these items. In the case of a submenu, I can press my right arrow to open the submenu and the left arrow to close. As I continue pressing down, you can see how I can cycle across all of the items. Okay, so let's talk about Type Ahead. Type Ahead is the feature that allows us to jump directly to an item by typing in the label of that item. So let's say we want to go um, from here directly to the item print. We can simply start typing in print. And as you can see, it's jumped straight there. When you open a menu, by default, it's positioned below the trigger and center aligned. And when there's not enough space on the sides, the menu will also be repositioned. For example, in this case, there's not enough space on the right, so the menu will get pushed a little bit more. Redix primitives also work with assistive technology. For example, here's how it works with voiceover. Settings, menu pop-up button. New tab command T, new window command N, new private window shift command N, history, collapsed menu item. You are currently on a menu item. To choose this menu item, press control, option, space. To close this menu, press escape. Versal, menu item, menu history, three items. Stitches, menu item. Modals, menu item. 
And that's only for one component. This goes to show how much work it takes to get it right. And the only thing missing in these components is styling, which they leave up to you to add. So you essentially get the best of both worlds. You can create your own components with your custom design, but you don't have to worry about any of the things mentioned before. These unstyled component libraries are still fairly new and most of them were released somewhere in 2020, which currently is roughly three years ago. However, there are already a good amount of libraries to choose from, especially for React. Radix UI seems to be the most complete and is the most popular with over 9000 stars on GitHub and is even used by well-known companies such as Vercel, Code Sandbox and Superbase, who have a lot of good things to say about it. But there are also other good alternatives to choose from, such as Reach UI, React Area by Adobe, and Headless UI by Tailwind. And even MUI is working on their own unstyled component library called Base UI. But since Radix is the most popular one, let's use it as an example and take a look. Here I have a clean Next.js project, but you can use Create React App or whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Now let's try out the popover component. First we need to install it. We do that on a per component basis. So we just install the popover component from Radix UI like this. Now we can create our custom component and import popover from Radix. Next, let's create the basic structure. These are subcomponents which make up the popover component. You can find the structure in the documentation. First, let's see what it looks like. As you can see, there is nothing yet. That's because we didn't fill it with any content. Let's open the trigger component. Currently, it's a self-closing tag, but we can open it like this and put in some text. Let's also put some text in the content component. Now, if we refresh the page, we can see the trigger and if we click it, the popover opens. That's the basic structure of this component. So we have a root, inside of it a trigger, an anchor, and a portal, which has a nested content component, which again has a close and an error component. It's as basic as it can be with zero styling. But we get all the benefits mentioned earlier. If we for example press tab on the keyboard, we can select it, open it by pressing enter and close it again with enter, which is great. Also, notice how we can click away and it automatically closes. Pretty cool, right? And if we inspect it, we can see that it has all the important properties such as role and area labels for accessibility. Now let's apply some styling. I'm gonna use Tailwind here, but you can use normal CSS, CSS and JS, or whatever styling method you prefer. Looks way better now, doesn't it? I'm not gonna go any deeper in this video, but if you wanna see the full tutorial on Radix, then let me know in the comments. Because there is more to say, for example how state is handled, how to combine components, and how to add animations and so on. Anyway, now let's address the question you're probably asking yourself right now. Should you use it? And the answer to that is, it depends. Before you decide to scrap your whole codebase and replace it with Radix, consider the following. There is always a trade-off, no matter what you choose. A normal component library saves the most amount of time, if the design is fairly simple. But if it's very complex and custom, you might save more time by choosing an unstyled component library. On the other hand, not all websites and services are meant to have highly polished and unique designs. Internal tools, for example, have to be functional in the first place, and then maybe a bit nice looking. But oftentimes that's not a high priority. In that case, it can be better to just use a style component library, such as Material UI, and keep it basic. As you can see, it all depends on your requirements and needs. But in many cases, unstyled component libraries can be the best choice, which is why you should consider them. Thank you for sticking around to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.